Washington versus Texas. It is the Sugar Bowl. It is Monday, January 1st, 8.45 p.m. from the Superdome in New Orleans, Louisiana. Current FanDuel numbers, let's check them out. Texas, minus four and a half. The total in the low 60s here, 63 and a half. Did you notice the public knee-jerk reaction when this game was announced? Maybe you fell victim to it. I know I did. They announced Washington versus Texas, and my mind said, oh, Texas, Texas probably, you know. And then you think about it a little more. Maybe you dive into some of the stat profiles and you say, "Uh uh-oh, matchup issues here for Texas. And then if you're really brave, you dive deep, 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 and you go, hmm, maybe that stat profile is not as it appears. And then only just the pure psychopaths amongst us dive into the fourth tier, and that is, is it an angel-demon situation on each shoulder where I had it figured out originally, and then my evil subconscious is trying to mislead me to where I pick against Washington for like the ninth time this year, and that's a dark, dark place to be. You look in the mirror in the bathroom in the morning, you don't like the person looking back at you. So here's what I'm going to try and do. I'm going to try and figure out how Washington, with the number one passing offense in the country, fares against Texas with the number 96 passing defense in the country. And I can hear you right now yelling, not too good, Josh, not too good. Don't overthink the room. Well, allow me to overthink the room for a second. Because on the other side, Texas has got the number four run defense, Washington number 100 running the ball in the country. So those numbers would indicate to you Washington can throw the ball all day on Texas, and even though Washington may not be able to run it, it doesn't really matter because they can do the first thing. Is that how football works? In my experience, most of the time, no. In my experience, and watching Texas a little bit closer this year, a lot of that has come because teams have been playing catch-up against Texas. A lot of it's come when they're up two and three scores and teams have no choice but to pass the ball, and those stat profiles and those box scores have become a little bit tilted. It's not that the yards don't count. It's not that the points they gave up don't count. It's just if I have them in a one-possession back-and-forth affair either way against Washington on New Year's Day in the Superdome, do those numbers hold up? I guess it's what I'm trying to figure out. I'm not so sure that's the way it works, but you know what? On the other side, I'm not so sure they're going to shut Washington down running the ball. Now, now these are the kinds of sentences that were not coming out of our collective mouths uh, about two months ago. But then Washington all of a sudden figured out, wait a second, we can run the ball half decent. I know what the numbers say. Like, I I know if Texas is top five run defense and Washington's in the triple digits, I know those numbers suggest they shouldn't be able to run the ball effectively. Washington's no joke. Washington's no joke up front. Physically, they're no joke. Now, Texas isn't either defensively. That's why they have that kind of number they do. Um, Washington has not seen a player like Sweat all year in the middle of an interior defensive line. I will grant you all that. I am just telling you, I don't expect to turn this game on and see Texas swarming and overwhelming Washington physically at the line of scrimmage, defense versus offense. They may win it. They, it, it may be stalemate to slight Texas win. I know too well because I have learned the hard way. You're not overwhelming Washington there. And they can manufacture run on the perimeter through the air. Uh, They will have, I think, enough success running to where they can maintain, if not outright balance, at least the illusion of balance. Now, on our show, we don't believe in balance as being a statistical thing. We just think balance is if the other guy has to respect your ability to run the ball and pass the ball, you're as balanced as you need to be at that point. Stat sheet doesn't matter. Washington just needs chain movers. That's what they need. They need to move the chains on third down. They, against Washington, have put on two clinics this year. They were 15 of 26 combined on third down against Oregon in the two games that they won. They were 17 of 30 against Oregon on third and fourth downs. And those were the two biggest games they played all year. Here's that stat sheet again. I might as well pop the paper. Texas, they look look like they have the remedy for it. Number two defense in the country on third down. Now... I was out at the Pac-12 championship game. And paper, you know, this stuff here, indicated that Oregon should have an overwhelming edge on both third down 
and on the ground, and they had edges in neither category. Did that mean the paper was lying to me? No, the paper just says what it says, stats. Stats don't lie, but they can very badly mislead you. Stats don't lie because stats are just showing you what has happened. Where they lie to you is if you assume they always predict the future. And that's where Washington's won games and made some people, your boy included, look foolish in the process. So just because that's the way it's happened this year doesn't mean that's the way it does have to happen on one night in early 2024. Red zone's always huge. Uh, we, we always check that, in, especially in these big-time games where you don't have major edges, so you're looking for incremental edges here or there. Texas, you know what they need to avoid? They need to avoid that Oklahoma day in the red zone. Remember the Red River shootout this year? Texas outdoes Oklahoma, it felt like, in a few areas, but they get in the red zone a bunch and they don't score. Oh, Oh, the paper has something to say, mind you. Uh, Washington, 119th defense in the country in red zone touchdown ratio. So look at that. The paper might as well be burnt orange. The paper is screaming Texas right now. Here's what the paper doesn't know. I don't know this either. Who's going to handle this moment better? No one's got experience. I mean, Sark's been there with Alabama, but his team doesn't have experience in this. Kalen DeBoer has got his guys going into an extremely hostile environment, probably 75-25 Texas. If they're lucky, if Washington's lucky, that'll be the edge. It may be 80-20, 85-15. Hat tip, Alaskan Airlines for adding flights to New Orleans. I criticized them two weeks ago. They came through. I can't help but take partial credit for that. Some of you don't realize I'm being sarcastic there when I say that, so let me let me remind you, I'm being sarcastic, but um, it's going to be a tough ticket, man. It's just it's it's New Orleans and Houston. That's where the semifinal and final is. It couldn't have set up any better if you're a Texas Longhorn fan. But having said that, that doesn't mean anything. If you come out of the gate stumbling and Washington gets a 10-0 lead on you, it doesn't matter. And so who handles the moment? Because if Texas gets the 10-0 lead and they start leveraging that home crowd, then it matters a whole lot. I don't know who to expect handling that moment better. I could see Texas playing as tight as a snare drum. I could also see him, I could see him just jumping out to an early lead like they did against Oklahoma State. Actually, you scratch that. That's the first and last time you'll hear me compare Washington and Oklahoma State on the show tonight. But I could see him starting off fast. I don't know what to expect there. I think the game will eventually settle in, and that's where I think you need to forget about any illusions you have in your mind of Texas just out-athleting. Washington. I know what the team talent composite rating says. I know what the recruiting rankings say. I know Washington too. You're not going to badly out-athlete them. You won't make them look foolish. You may beat them. You may beat them by 10 or 14 points, but you're not running circles around them. You're not going to overwhelm them. Uh, you're going to do good to just beat them. So getting rid of that illusion, have you found enough margins on, on the edges of these different points of interest in the game, have you found enough? Let's take a look at what the odds makers say. It's FanDuel right now, minus four and a half in favor of Texas. Our model, not shockingly, has Texas as a bigger favorite, Texas minus six. Now, I'm going to say something here that is probably not the wisest of words to come out of my mouth, given how short the JP poll has been on Washington all year. But I do want you to know I did the manual adjustment heading into playoffs. So we manually adjusted Washington and added in a couple of different categories. So this is a revamp number. Model still leans Texas. When in doubt, I will go with the model. And it has not fared well with Washington games this year. Readily admit that. But I didn't find any reason to flip it myself. So in absence of that, I'm going to take Texas to win. I have no confidence whatsoever on the spread. I will take them to cover. Um, there will be no money wagered on this game from me. I will just sit back and watch. I'm going to take Texas to win. What I think will happen is there'll be wild swings of emotion, but I think second half game will be in the balance either way. And I think Texas is just a little bit better team to where they win it in the end. Not overwhelmingly. Don't expect anything like that. Really competitive game. I'm going to take Texas to win it, though. Of course he is, says my friends in the Pacific Northwest. 